this, all these lies and scandal. And this is what goes viral online. The truth doesn't actually, nobody wants to hear the truth. Nobody wants to hear that you live a boring life and you're married and you do things right. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, you would think that they would say, hey, you know, send me a video or let's talk to you on Skype or Zoom. No, they go by strictly what's being typed and pictures, stolen pictures online. Man, that is wild. So a lot of these, this reminds me, I was in banking for a while. We'd, we'd get these people would scam all these older clients. It was really sad of like, they'd come in and say they were, they were engaged to this guy, but he, they just needed to send him $6,000 so that he could fly to the country and all that. And it's like, we would just sit him down and like, I'd give these old ladies a hug and be like, sweetie, I promise this isn't a real thing. But sometimes they would, they'd be so, they believe it so much. They, they couldn't, you know, I, I, help for them. Years, I felt so bad for my followers and I try to put out, you know, warnings and I tried to help them and I reported but it became a full-time job because as many as you would take down times that by two would start up the next day. So you literally couldn't live a normal life and do anything else if all you did was take care of impersonation pages. So I got to the point where I just had to say, you know what? I, it's not my responsibility to babysit my followers. Yeah. Yeah. You just put out warnings and then they, they everybody's responsible for their own actions from there. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man, that's so you you help a lot of people, I guess, when they come into the model, hey, take your husband, take your boyfriend, take, you know, control what you're doing. And then can you kind of talk about some other pieces, how you're helping a lot of upcoming models and up and coming people in the fitness industry and thing like that, things like that? So I have a lot of girls that, you know, say, well, how do you know, how do I do what you do? Or how do I get to where you get? And I think that um, people idolize or put certain things as a glam and they look at it as a glamorous thing and we need to really stop perceiving it as that because it's a business like any other business and it's really not glamorous it's it's actually the opposite but because it's so pretty in the media it, it's perceived as that so i try to tell girls don't don't see modeling as like the top of the ladder see it as the bottom of the ladder it's not that it's bad. It's not that it's all bad. There are some aspects to it that you can learn from, especially with starting your own business. But look at it more like a ladder system and have a, a bigger goal in mind five, 10 years. And that, that's what you've done really successfully now. Because as I follow you, you have really shifted from a top of cover model, fitness model to I mean, you're your own kind of empire now, right? And so can you kind of walk us through that that kind of, that shift? And then I, I want to add one thing when you're done with that, because I know why you've been so successful just from getting to know you over the last six months or so. You have to be <laughs> willing to let go of who you were to become who you're going to be. And I think that's that's the failure and the, dis, the disconnect with a lot of models, why they're not able to go, because they kind of just look at it like face value. Like, I'm going to take everything that I'm getting right now and I'm just gonna go balls to the wall and take it while I have it and laugh everybody to the bank. But <laughs> they need to stop seeing it that way. They need to look at it like, you know what? Okay, I've, I've learned everything there is to know here. Now let's let other people know that that part of me is no longer and reinvent yourself. And you have to be constantly willing to reinvent yourself and let people see you in a light that's not always gonna be pretty. It's not always gonna be glamorous. It's gonna be real. And you are gonna get a, you are gonna definitely get a backlash. There's gonna be people who kind of, in their own minds, feel like they knew you and they owned you and they control you, which I'm dealing with that now. Um, and once they feel like they don't control you and they can't get you to post what they want, they're gonna backlash. You're gonna get a lot of hate. But understand that that's part of it. That's part of letting go of who you were and now starting over. That, that's a, a couple points there. I think that's awesome. That as as you just grow as a person too. Sometimes you just outgrow people, right? And that's painful. It might be people that you loved, that, you know, maybe you worked with this person for four or five years. Now you've you've transitioned into this new part of your career. Well, they still profit from you being in this space, right? Exactly. And so you just have to be willing to say, hey, we had a great relationship for a season, but now I'm kind of moving on here. And I think even just in, in friendship, friendships and things like that, sometimes you just outgrow people and that's okay. You can still love them, but you know. I'm very fortunate in the fact that everybody that I have worked with thus far, I've stayed in a personal connect with even up until this day. And I think that is something that anybody can learn in business is that when you do things and you collaborate with other artists, don't look at it like, what can I get from them? Because I think that's, that's a big issue. You see that all the time, like, oh, what can you do for me? And then they don't build a relationship there. And that's the worst thing you can do because you know what, down the road, 
it's all about relationships. And maybe you phase out of that part of your life, but when you have stayed in a, hey, how are you doing? Just checking on you. When you show that there's an actual human behind you and that you care about them and what they're doing, it doesn't matter whether they can't use you specifically for their business. They're going to also word of mouth to other things and, and vice versa. So yeah, I agree with you. That's actually the point that I was going to make it when I started this. I know why you've been so successful for so long, and it is because I have great buddies on Twitter and, and a couple of them, more than one, probably three or four, to be honest, have actually messaged me or text me and said, dude, you'll never believe it. Like Gia McCool just sent me a DM to encourage me to keep going that she likes my tweets and that, and I'm like, some of these guys have, have 80 followers. Like you're gaining nothing from that. Let's be honest. You have 9 million, they have 80, you know, but like just the fact that I realized you started doing this stuff several months ago and I'm like, dude, what a cool person. And that's why you make it. And I think everybody I've ever met to this point, who's really successful has that exact mindset that you just talked about. I never got hung up on oh, you know this person or you can do, I, I didn't care what you could do for me. All I cared is how you made me feel and how I made you feel back. And so when I go into social media, I look at it like that. Stop looking at your followers, your likes. How is that person, does that person make you feel special and like you're a human and you care? Like that's what should, that's what it was meant for. I don't understand why we've gotten so far away from that. Um, yeah, that, that's a great, great point. You I'll could ask my mom and my dad. I had no problem confronting bullies. Like if I saw somebody <laughs> picking on somebody, I would get right up in their face. You leave them alone. Like I just, I would go out of my way. If I saw somebody, even like a nerd being picked on, I would go over there and like hug them and be like, oh, you know, okay. And they leave him alone. You know, like I went out of my way. I can't stand people who bully other people. It's just so wrong. It doesn't make sense to me. I feel like it's it's just something missing in them, right? Like for, I, you know, even on social media posts, you'll say the nicest thing. You'll put out just a kind tweet. I'll put out a kind tweet. And then underneath it, there's just somebody's always spewing some kind of hate. And that I've just kind of learned that now I, I say a quick prayer for them and I try and respond kindly back. Like, hey, brother, you know, what, what, whatever's hurting you, I, I hope you heal from it and have a great day. There's blessings everywhere, you know, choose to see them, you know, but so, so the best way, and I think we both approach it like this is just, be kind, exactly. continue to exude a light and just try and lift everybody up. It, you know, show that you're the bigger person. And then they're like, oh, wait a second. This is not the normal. And then they go away. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I've seen, that was one of my favorite tweets years and you've had a lot, but I remember it was like, you know, something to the effect of, you know, you keep trying to tear me down. I'm just going to keep being more kind and bless everyone up, you know? And I was like, yeah, I definitely resonate with that a lot. <laughs> exactly. My mom always taught me when, when somebody slaps you on the cheek, you turn the other cheek. So. <laughs> I love that. Now, can I ask about your parents maybe a little bit and say, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure they're certainly very proud of you, everything you've built and everything you've been able to accomplish. Was there ever kind of a strenuous point in that relationship then when you went and said, Hey, I don't, I don't care what you say about this. I'm going to do my own thing. Oh, the modeling? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, there was a time that I wasn't speaking to them because of it, because they were like, if this is what you're going to do, you know? We don't want to talk to you. And I was like, okay, you know, and yeah, so there was, there was some weird times in there and, and then they realized, you know, it wasn't worth it. I realized it wasn't worth it. And we just let it go and moved on. And unfortunately, you know, that's why I always tell people don't think that you have all the time in the world, because as soon as I started to, uh, you know, really have an amazing, you know, time with everybody. I start having deaths left and right in my family. So mm. I lost my brother and my dad and my grandma. It was just like, boom, 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 every year, you know? That's why I always tell people, you know, don't think, everybody thinks they have so much time. You really don't. Yeah, that's true, man. I, I, I need to, that's a good reminder to, I need to call, I'm going to call my parents right after this podcast, just tell them how much I love them. You know, it's, <laughs> I, I went through a similar thing when I, I dropped out of college to play poker professionally. And my mom and, and some people really close to me told me how foolish it was. And, and I kind of told them, look, I have this vision on my heart. I know where it's going to take me. I'm not a nine to five traditional. I just know that about myself, even at 19, you know, but we had a year or two where it was pretty tense too. We didn't really talk. And so being able to come full circle and heal from that has been a good thing, you know? Yeah, definitely. Nice. Well, can, can we shift gears here a little bit and something that I really admire about you too, 
I love how much you love your husband. It, it, it's uh-huh. just, it comes out yeah. of you on, on all your stuff. You talk about it a lot. I love him a lot. Sometimes I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tall guy too, man. He is. I saw it because you're tall too, correct? Yeah, I am. <laughs> how, how tall are you? 5'11", and he's 6'9". Okay, he's 6'9"? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, man, he's a big guy. So can you kind of walk us through that, you know, that married life, how you guys keep it going? Uh, how I long have you guys been married? Before. I get to pick whatever heels I want. Um, <laughs> picks me up. Uh, <laughs> I feel small. Let me go. Keep going. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I guess like in your industry, I see a lot of people that don't stay as grounded as you do. And so what's been kind of your secret to, hey, keeping that on fire marriage and, and always kind of, you know, you seem very, you just seem grounded, like you're easy to talk to, hang out with. I mean, let's be honest, people that have 9 million followers, a lot of them, are, they're not like that, you know? <laughs> uh, so I, I would contribute being surrounded by people who keep you grounded. Like that's a major, major thing. Um, I, everybody in my circle, I stayed with before I got known up until this day. It's mm. not like I, you know, started to get well known and then ditched my husband or ditched my old friends and got new ones. No, like I believe I'm a very loyal person. Like that's just who I am. I'm a very loyal person. So even though there were times when I started to get well known, that really put a taxing, it did, it caused a lot of issues in the marriage because it's just not a career for a married woman. And I think that's like Mm -hmm. why a lot of girls can't stay in a lasting marriage or a lasting relationship because they're always here, there, everywhere. People want you to appear single. So even though they have no real intention to be with you or no intention to really have a commitment (laughs) with you, they want you to, to show up single and appear single. I would be at events red carpet events and he'd be standing next to me and they would literally tell him, can you please move out of the way? You know, stuff like this. And it's just a very hard career. It was hard. It was hard, but I always had my mom and my dad, you know, they kept me grounded. They told me, you know, anytime I start feeling, well, you know, my husband's not doing what he needs to be doing. They would remind me, you're not being realistic. Like, let me tell you the Bible way of doing this, you know, and she would break, she's always breaking out the Bible on me. <laughs> A <laughs> wise <laughs> mom right there. <laughs> sure for you. And so, and, and I would, you know, it took me a little while, you know, I have to let the emotions come down and think rationally. And you're right. She's right. He's, he's a good man. You know, he may not, he may like the world will make it seem like, well, if he's not rich, he's not a good man. <laughs> uh, if he's not taking you on fancy trips and doing things for you and surprising you here or there, he's not a good man. Uh, if he's not fit and, and, you know, has muscles and tall, dark and handsome, he's not a good man. Like there's all these stupid, unrealistic expectations. The truth of the matter is he's loyal. He's my friend. He's my best friend. I can tell him anything I want. You know, you don't get in a marriage or a relationship because the man's more financially, or you can gain something from it. That, that's what really bothers me. And I get this all the time, every day, 200 messages a day. Well, he must be rich. He must, no, actually, I'm the one with the money. <laughs> like, who knows this? I'm the one with the money, okay? So I'm taking him on trips. I'm going to his cars. But see, nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to hear, oh, you know what? There's got to be something wrong with her. She mm. can't be a great, humble, and good-looking, and smart. I can't. There's no such thing. And I don't know why people have to stereotype or typecast people in general. I wish people would just learn and listen. And I've never, I don't know, I'm just not that way. So it doesn't matter who you are. I look at you, I, I watch you. Even if you do something that I don't necessarily agree with, I don't judge you and I don't unfollow you or say anything bad about you. It's just like, okay, that's their, their views on things. Yeah. Why, why would you, I I'm with you. I don't, I don't understand why people, it's like some people look up looking for that stuff to be mad, but there, there's more than one path to victory too. Like, it's like, it, there might be a traditional way to do things, but there's many other ways to do things. And yeah, it seems like you brought a lot of that same kind of like mindset into your business, almost into your, to your marriage and into your relationships and everything where, yeah, you're just going to be who you are. And you know, you don't need to fit in some kind of weird box that everybody else wants to trap you in. Right. <laughs> Can, can I read you a quote here that you had um, yeah, recently yeah. on one of your, your Instagrams? Cause I love this. Um, it said, I'm old fashioned when it comes to relationships, happy wife, happy life is wrong. <laughs> and you had a big, long thread and I loved that. And I read it and my wife and I actually read it. Can you expand on that and kind of tell the viewers about that? Cause I love that one a lot. 
so I got some mixed reviews with that. Uh, there were some people that said, well, I think you're overthinking it or you're like reading it wrong. And no, I didn't read it wrong. I didn't overthink it. It is a cute saying. I even catch myself, you know, hearing it from others and kind of laughing and giggling. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to correct anybody with it. I just want people to understand that we need to stop looking at it as a one-sided thing. And we need to start seeing it as a partnership. It's a friendship. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, whatever makes me happy. And that's why I'm marrying you. No, it's, you're getting to, you're getting together to share, to share the rest of your life together, you know, and to do things together, not because that person is going to be giving you something in return. Mm -hmm.